Oh, we'll do another one. You know, a lot of the dealings I had, because I went through this process, one of the things I brought up in all of my, because I went before the lawyer myself and all, a couple of times, but I always brought up, which was true, I said, your own representative in 2008 or whenever I started, I said, he made the statement to me, if I were you, I would sue. Now, he was being honest, and I, and I was going to use him, because being I represented myself, normally what they want you to do, there's a lot of high-powered attorneys where you live, where we live, and I've had my friends that have used these various attorneys. And, and the reason the disability attorneys, which I don't do any of that, the reason they take some cases is there's like back pay or whatever. Sometimes it's $100,000 or whatever. And then they get a cut of the money. Now, it's a close-knit community here. And I've covered corruption and courts and all. But Social Security is supposed to be a federal thing. And it is federal. But even when I discussed it with, like, other... Uh, Social Security people, they kind of said, oh, no, you got to deal with the local port people, Port Street. And I just felt like, though I did when I had to, I felt like they were untrustworthy because of that one statement from the beginning. If I were you, I would sue. And so I'm not a legal scholar, but because I did it myself, I, I requested, you know, send me my medical records, all the correspondence we had the last eight years for and they don't do it anymore. I said, I represent myself. You're required to send me the documentation we had over the last so many years. And they're supposed to do it. What I think they want you to do is go through a connected person, lawyer. There's no, there's no, rec, uh, there's no paper trail, if you will. When, the way the media describes our local area is they're a close-knit group. And the Cola Times did something on the judges here a few months ago, and they were trying to, from a freedom of information request about sexual harassment suits against a particular judge who's in trial, he's got to go to trial for two felony counts. His name was Judge Guy Williams. But when they requested freedom of information request about so many sexual harassment complaints against them, the response that they gave was, we are a close-knit community, and we don't want stuff getting out. So it makes you wonder, like, oh. and I wonder if you use these particular attorneys that got a lot of my friends, some who died once they got their approval and they went on basically shooting up until they died. They can go out to eat with these people that work at the Social Security. They can give them a gift of 60000 or 30000 one time in kind gift, unless you had uh, big investigations. You would never be able to track any of that. And our Social Security office in Corpus Christi is in a drug area, okay? I have people I work with in that area over the years. It's called Port, but it's right off of a street called Ayers. It's kind of like a bad area of town, though I don't mind working with my friends over the years that are in that area. But one of the challenges, because I deal with all myself, they said, okay, you're going to represent yourself, which I did. They said, you have the right to call any witnesses that you desire. And the one witness I was going to call, and I did in writing, request that first person I spoke to at Social Security. I said, I'm going to call him as a witness. Because the statement he made, if I were you, I would sue, showed that he felt that there was a legitimate claim. And he himself said I had a great work history. I said, so I'm going to question why in the beginning that statement was made. It shows a prejudice against me because he knew somehow, oh, you're going to have to sue. Now, when I went to that final thing and then went not only did they not have that man there as a witness, 
which the paperwork said you can call anybody as a witness, but they also never told me, either in writing or at the hearing, why I was denied that witness. That was grounds to appeal that particular court thing. That was grounds, legitimate grounds. And they denied that too. They get mad that you check into it. One time I was with Pops, who passed away. There was a nice black girl that was working for Pops as a provider. She also had another job. And I don't know her name, and this was a few years ago. And I'll never forget, I was sitting with Pops, and my leg would go out a lot worse. Sometimes it hasn't happened, maybe it happened a few months ago. But when my leg goes out, it's like it, it just, you fall down on the ground. So it, sometimes when I do those drives, like I got to be careful, if it goes out in the car, you, you got to stop quick and then get out and lay on the ground. But it's not been as bad these last few years. But I couldn't risk it doing that if I, because it would start doing that on a regular basis. So this girl happened to be in Pop's apartment when he was living off of Devon Street in Corpus Christi. And her husband, who was also a black man, but I told her I work with guys, convicts and all, and he was doing some prison time, but he was going to get out, and she said, oh, maybe you'll meet him. I said, I sure would like to. And then she got a call, and she was elated, and it was the Social Security people, and it was her lawyer, and it wasn't so much on speakerphone, but you can hear the conversation. And he said, all you got to do is verify to me that you're unable to work a job and you cannot work at all and you get approved. And she did. And she was working two jobs. And I don't fault that girl. She was saying, you know, she might have had kids. I'm not, but I knew it was a scam and it was a game. And I documented about the guys who died that got approval, not until they died, but I gave their names. I said, I want to ask you this question, respond to me in writing over these last few years. I said, so-and-so passed away. This is his name, this is the address, this is the uh, zip code that he lived in, gave the full name. I said, respond to me why, when you approved him for disability, and you knew he was an active user, and then he overdosed within a year. I said, just respond to me. That's the no response at all. No response at all. And then during these proceedings, there was a question whether I would ever qualify at the age of 62 or 65 or ever. I said, let me ask you this. I worked all those years, I have all those credits, but because I retired at a certain age, Will I ever qualify when I'm 68 or 70? They never even answered or never would correspond on that. It made me think, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. So yeah, it's a scam in this place. And it, it seems possible. I don't go to the local social security office that often most of it I did myself through online and all. But I used to take Jimmy and I used to take the guys there. And it's full every day and there's people there every day. And there's drug dealers on the outside in that area. And they get out and and it's just a scam. And we, I think there should be a federal investigation on this port social security for sure. Because when I documented various things, like guys that died after they got approval, I gave the names, I said, I want you to answer me, not a single response. Not a single response. You'd think they would take that serious and say, Mr. Torello, we're grateful that you notified us. After the guys died, there's more than one. I said, you know, they, as soon as you approved them, within a year they passed away from drug overdoses. And they don't even respond. They know what they do.